So it's um it's 9:30 Sunday night. Um for the last 5 or 6 years I'll post a photo of my watch um next to my steering wheel. The reason I do that is because the watch shows what time it is that I'm actually leaving. The steering wheel shows that I'm in the car and not sitting at home or whatever. I'm typically leaving the shop. I've done it for years. Is this still running? Yeah. And um, inevitably, guys will show up and talk shit because I think I'm a badass because I work so long or I think I'm better than them or whatever. The fact is, I'm not posting that photo for them. I'm posting the photo for guys who email me every single day and say that that motivates them. And I see dudes starting to do it. And when I do it, guys also in those threads post a bunch of pictures of their own watches showing the time, you know, that they're at work currently. A lot of them, you know, law enforcement, paramedics, you know, whatever it is. But I don't post those photos for the guys talking shit. It's amazing the guys that show up and talk the shit though. A lot of those guys, they come onto our Facebook page or somebody on some closed group will mention SOE and they will jump all over that shit. But you have to ask yourself when you see that, what do they stand to gain? I tell my kids that, I tell my wife that, I tell employees that when they're having a problem and they want to do something, I go, pick your battles. Pick your battles just because she's wearing something you don't like or she said something you don't like inevitably what do you gain from it how does it better your life your situation your productivity or whatever it is to talk shit on that person these guys come onto my facebook page to talk shit that means they're looking at my facebook page and a lot of times like today i posted a couple things that guys disagreed with blasting some some customers we had a guy ordered a visor cover same day said what's the uh delivery date and i said it says eight to twelve weeks right below but this is a no ETA item, which means we don't fucking know when we're going to deliver it. And um, he, he never bothered to reply. But he emailed several more times over the next couple weeks with the same shit. So finally today, after, after telling him, hey, I'll, I'll just refund and cancel your order. And he never said dick about it. So today I canceled and refunded his order. And that was it. And he came back with, I didn't want my order refunded. So I blast him a little bit. Said, well, you know, the actuality is these things are being made right now. We have we have uh, upwards of 200 maybe of them on order. And we're building them in batches of 25. We're running 25 black a day. We just ran all the ODs. We just ran all the coyotes. Multi-cam will be next. And, um, but you don't have to worry about it anymore because your wait's over. You, you're fired as a customer. And inevitably guys show up talking shit. How I think I'm a badass because I do that... Um, now I, I love all the nut huggers. There's always some something, and it's always on my page when they say it. Why was he looking at my page? And I'm, I'm headed somewhere with this. Chances are he wasn't looking at my page. It showed up in his feeds. Why did this show up in his feeds, but the other 10 posts from today didn't show up in his feeds? Or the last, you know, I, I make literally dozens of posts every day. Well, it's because Facebook's algorithms are very, very low right now. And um, people just aren't seeing our posts. So when I put something up like this, it draws a lot of traffic. Somebody he knows commented, and he was the first dude to talk shit. Somebody he knows commented, so it changed the algorithms. People were sharing that post. People were commenting on that post. There were sub comments in that post, 100 of them. And it bumped it to appear in his feed. And that is why I do those things. Believe me. If I wasn't making money at this point doing this, I wouldn't do it. But they literally took us from a million dollar company to a two million dollar company, and then from a two million to a four million, and then five million annually. And the only thing I changed when that kind of money jumped was blasting these guys. Dude called Amanda one night, left a voicemail on her phone, 10 o'clock on a, I think it was a Sunday night. He had ordered Friday night in the evening. And said, where the fuck is my tracking number? How come I, I paid expedited shipping? Well, motherfucker, you didn't pay expedited shipping. It's the only shipping we offer. The only way we ship is U.S. priority mail. And it comes with tracking. And it comes with some insurance. They provide a box. And it ships. But, but inevitably, there's always that asshole. So I blasted him. Didn't know what was going to happen. Amanda's like, what, what are we going to do? 
I go, we'll, we'll be fine. We moved here to work with three people. Even if, even if we shut the business down, everything's paid for. Like we are fine if we went out of business and just grew a garden and, you know, raised the kids. But uh, the, that didn't happen. What happened was guys rallied around it. And so many of our customers are blue collar workers. And they said, man, I wish I could say that in my business. And they shared it and it went viral. And um, we learned after that, when we did it, to use their name as a coupon code. If these guys went out and started talking shit, trying to damage us, I would use their name as a coupon code and we would make $20,000 over a weekend on that shit. The guy's going, yeah, that dude's an asshole. Fuck him. We want to support SOE. We'll use his name as a coupon code. And oftentimes the sales were a lesser sale than when we run a big sale. Dudes just did it to support because they could, they could, they could relate to that. They wish they could do it in their business. So when you see those things, watch them close. People like to see a train wreck. It's the same reason when you're on a, a busy interstate, rush hour traffic, and it takes literally an hour to go a quarter mile, and you get up there, and there's not even an accident. It's just a, a dude changing a spare tire. And it's because people like to watch that train wreck. And what happens when I blast these guys, I'm just, we are so busy now because of it, we can't do it like we used to. But I'll, I'll blast them. We'll make a YouTube video about them and I'll send them the link and they just feel so wrong. I'm going to show all my buddies. Well, that's what we want. And some of them have caught on to it. So it's, you know, it's slowed down a little bit for us, but new businesses are doing, I get emails every day from new businesses sending me their links and showing me their analytics from the backside of the shopping cart. And they're making big money off of this shit. It, that's how I know it works. It wasn't just us. It's not a one-time case. We replicated it many times. We told people how to do it and it's still working five years later so why are you know why are these guys so we we would do that and um they would just feel wronged and they they now work for us for free you never see a guy in front of a, a auto dealership with a sign that goes these guys are awesome you see the dude out there with a sign that goes these guys fucked me over um fuck these guys don't do business with them well i just use that to my advantage um cal poly professor um, in class, Business 102, he said, you know, on average, a happy customer will tell three. An unhappy customer will tell seven to 12. You know, that's a much broader number. Um, I believe that number is actually higher because we poke them, make a video about them. We really wrong them. Like we've had guys go, hey, this dude in church was talking about you. Hey, this guy at work was talking about you. And we always, we always, especially the big ones, we know they're working for us because they're people that know them email us hey this dude at work he's kind of a prick he told us not to you know fuck you guys i went and checked you out here's an order and we know they work because people use the coupon codes and there's not really a, an incentive for our our existing customers to use those codes um because we we'd run sales all the time and when we do one of these sales with this dude's name it's always a lesser sale um so that's we just know they work there's there's not a, a big incentive to do it they just rally around so I'm on the drive home. Um, I started making these videos just on my phone so I don't have to hand them to Nick and have him go through them. Um, it's just easier. That's why we haven't been doing videos. We are literally so busy. Uh, Nick's shipping all day. I'm out production sewing. Um, what I found is if I sit out there and sew, because I run so fast that we get a lot more production out of the girls because it's louder and it's kind of like a race. You know, Nobody wants to be on a track driving slow when you've got um, you know fast cars going fast, blasting past you, it's just an incentive, it's the chase. And uh, if I get out there and sew for a couple hours, and I'll even pick up just, just production work, I will grab a bin of something that needs to be made, and I will pre-sew all the first steps in it. And um, I like to sew shit that I can run fast. So I take all that and just give them the final pieces where they gotta put the label, and that takes a little more time. And uh, I just like to run that machine wide open. So that speeds up production. It puts me in the cutting bay so I know what's in there. So in the evening when I go to pull um, the orders from the day that just have single items or whatever, I've been in the business, I've been in that side of the business that day, and uh, I know where those bins are, I know what needs to be cut, I know what's not cut, um, and I can kind of just, you know, react to the daily orders a little better that way. So. My new thing is I'm, I am in every aspect of my business. I've got guys that are great. I've got guys that are fully capable. But if I get in there, I have my thumb on the pulse a little better. And it just goes back to that video earlier, accountability. If, if something's not running, 
or something's not happening, you know, you should have seen it coming before it happened. You should have a, a plan for in case it goes wrong. You should have three plans. Have an exit strategy for whatever the system is. Whatever it is, uh, supply. We, you know, we buy shit from this. I use one company that I've used for 20 years for some of our materials. I could get them cheaper elsewhere. I continue to do business with them because they have stood by me um, through my ups and downs. And when I came home and needed material, they fronted me cases of material to restart my business back in 2005. So there, I'm loyal to them. And I always will be uh, loyal to people who do me right like that. Um, but occasionally we'll order. We'll have a reoccurring order every week or every month of something. And sometimes it just won't show up. Always have three lines of supply for everything. That's another uh, one of the things I took away from Business 102. When I took business classes, um, I'd already made millions. And... Um, a lot of it just didn't apply. A lot of the basic shit they're telling you, the customer's always right. You know, just blah, 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 blah. And me being in the class, I could, you know, counter some of that. And maybe maybe I'm an idiot and just imagining it. But the professor, you know, we would talk for hours after class a lot of time. He was the manager of a J.C. Penney's, I believe, at the time. So he liked what I had to say. And I think that the students in class greatly benefited by... Um, my take on some of that stuff and I stay in touch with a lot of those guys still I still hear from some of those guys and uh, they, it's funny because 10 years later these guys will see my YouTube video and go holy shit son of a bitch here you are doing the same thing you were talking about back then but uh, I'm pulling up into my neighborhood uh, my house is like 14 minutes away from the shop so uh, I'm going to run in here and get a plate with some olives and crackers and some uh pepperoni and shit like that snack type foods and make a margarita and I'm going to sit on the bed and throw on hopefully there's something on history of discovery and not pay any attention to it and do some emails and social media shit but uh, that's what happens it's um, 9.40 I'm just getting home I'm, well I'm just in the neighborhood which is a two mile neighborhood in Camden there are no planned communities I live in the only one of them and um there's no zoning, no codes, nothing like that. I live right outside city limits. And um, I'm in a place called uh, The Estates. Um, there are some giant houses here that would be like $4 million homes in California. I don't live in one of those. Um, my house is nice compared to some of the places I lived in California. We've got two private lakes in the neighborhood here. Um, we have a, a huge hunting lodge attached to it right behind the house, so... And we got two acres of woods behind my house. And you can actually, you can hunt back there and, you know, do whatever you want, really. Um, but we're going to hunt this year on the compound property. We've already put up deer stands and uh, we're planting some food plots and going to uh, do some archery hunting this year. Uh, Cody, myself, and I'll take Sebastian, too. And then any of the employees that want to hunt out there are welcome as well. But um, I don't even know where I was going. I just kind of ramble. And, um, oh, so when I get home in the evening, you know, 10 o'clock whatever that's not getting home and stopping like I do emails for another two hours I'll go back and reply to emails I've already replied to today that have you know countered um, on social media I'll look at what our competitors are doing I'll look at people tag me all day in to people talking shit um, we'll just you know I'm all over the internet that's why this social media stuff it's funny guys go why don't you quit making cocks or quit making Facebook posts and you know run your business well, I have a bunch of employees to do that. It's just like, you know, any other business. Like, social media pretty much is my job within my company. And the reason we jumped and, you know, tripled our employees and, you know, quadrupled our shipping every day is because of the social media. People react to it, whether they like what I say or they dislike what I say. Um, that's the fact of it. Guys are like, stop making cocks and make real gear. Well, we, we do a cock. We give a, a free cock away um, on our sale code. If you are over $50, we give you a free product. And we usually throw in some stickers and patches, which you can only get by using that sale code. And it what we found is it jumps our sales from, you know, and 25% off. So it jumps our sales from 100 orders to 500 orders on every one of those codes in the same amount of time. So when you guys see us making cocks and we're taking pictures of those cocks, um, that's going with a real order every time that goes out. We sell very few cocks nowadays on orders. Every now and then, it'll do to throw one on. But 
they're like beanie babies. When we're making sail cocks, you can't buy those after the fact. The only way to get them is to use the code. And it's it's just it goes to show you. Um, we just ran a big sale, and we've been giving stuff away. We give away a Loom Tech watch, a Strider knife, you know, two thousand dollar prize packages. Usually there's two of them. And then we do ten runner ups, and you know we hook them up with you know a couple hundred bucks worth of cool shit too. And uh, to make it easy and fast, we just did one grand prize this last time. And we did like 400 orders as opposed to a thousand orders on a code. So for you guys who have business, there's a, you know, take what you will from that. But, you know, give something to make something. It takes money to make money. Um, and there's a counter to all those little sayings. I mean, when we started, we didn't have shit. We were literally stealing buckles um, off shopping carts. And, uh, you know, for, for every dude who did something one way, there's some guy who is just as successful or more successful who did it another way. Just because it worked for me doesn't mean it'll work for you. But um, most of our shit, I share it with you. And if you ask me, I'll tell you. And um, that's it. Good night. Turn that shit off.